Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening in and around Missoula and in the state of Montana, and possibly the nation and the world, depending upon what stories are happening in the news and what's impacting everyone today. So uh, today, we're going to talk about... Uh, uh, I got a new Dubman stuff, I got some weather, I got some news stuff, I got uh, city council stuff where they're talking about the Day of the Dead Parade and how some folks think it's uh, um, not appropriate to be celebrated here in the city of Missoula. I'll have that and more later on. Uh, so let's start things off with a little bit of weather. So currently it is 25 degrees outside, that first frost of the uh, of the season is here. Um, your windows, you had to get your window scrapers out and it's time to start scraping some of those windows out. Your high today is going to be 55, so it's not going to be too bad. Tonight, you have that 20% chance of showers with lows in the 36. Not quite those low freezing temperatures, but still, it is currently 25 degrees outside, but things will start warming up. For Thursday, your high is going to be 56. Your low is going to be 36. Um, your high by Friday, things are going to start warming up again for uh, the Friday. And then, of course, by Saturday, you're going to have that 40% chance of rain with a high of 54. But let's talk about another thing that's happening in the weather, and that is... Haver, Montana. Haver had a snow blizzard. If you haven't um, already heard in the news, uh, last couple uh, a couple days ago, um, it is currently 13 degrees there, and they had over 15 inches of snow. So um, basically, as of 10:20 uh, um, a.m. yesterday morning, uh, uh, no about 7,000 Northwestern Energy con um, customers. So basically, the snow happened over Monday night. And then on Tuesday morning, many people, 7,000 Northwestern Energy consumers along the High Line were without electricity, according to the power company, and dozens more reported outages had not yet been confirmed. The Montana Department of Transportation reported uh, severe driving conditions on the state and federal highways throughout the uh, much of Hill, Blaine, and uh, Chateau counties. Um, a down power line on US 2, four miles east of Harlem, blocked traffic so shortly after 9 a.m. Many public schools were closed Tuesday due to weather conditions and power outages. Affected school districts include Haver, Harlem, Zurich, and Chinook. Um, mean ba mean places such as Great Falls, known for their freak snow so storms, had about 1.5 inches. Because I remember when I was going to uh, Great Falls a couple times, they've uh, they've had um, unusual snowstorms happen in the weirdest months. So um, here is a nice little representation of a picture in Haver. This was a post that was posted on the weatherchannel.com and also you know through the Weather Channel. Um, yeah, this is kind of like the, some of the snow that Haver is um, dealing with right now and. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like the first snowfall of the season as well. But let's uh, let's move on and let's talk a little bit more about um, some things that are happening more locally here in uh, Missoula. So um, Lola Peak, uh, they have some trail closures, um, um, and we have some pictures from the aftermath of the fire. Um, here is a picture of up in the Lola Peak area as well. You can see a lot of the um, the burned stuff and of course there is still some um, smoke and some smoldering there according to the Lolo National Forest as well so there's some um, trail closures and you know it's just mostly because of um, some of the trees might be uh, the most of the trees are either dead or some of them that are still there might be hazardous for the certain areas here's another picture of a trail um, and of course uh, here is a map of all the closures so if as you can see that the uh, uh, striped black and white line right there are all is the trail that is closed in the inside the Lolo National Forest. So this trail you may need to avoid during the um, any kind of hiking or checking out some of the aftermath of the um, Lolo um, Lolo Na Lolo Peak Fire. Yeah, that's right. So uh, that's kind of what's happening locally. But here's another thing that's happening. The University of Montana went with the 38-year-old veteran and General Electric executive um, executive uh, Steve Bodner as the University of Montana's 18th president of the University of Montana. He is one out of four candidates that didn't have a doctorate and has no former employment in higher education. Commissioner Clayton Christian made the announcement Tuesday. He said, Seth is a leader who is best suited for th uh, to make this great university even stronger for a long term. Christian said in this statement, he has experience, skills, and personal effectiveness are tremendous attributes to uh, propel UM forward in its c um, continuing uh, trend, uh, tradition of excellence. And I have a clip of... Uh, a meeting that MCAT covered. We did this a lot. We did a live stream of this, and here is kind of like a, a a clip from it um, of somebody asking a question of w um, what 
uh, of a stu uh, of a kid who's um, who's planning on going to the University of Montana, but also going to MSU for engineering. So my, one of my major goals is to help my parents financially and physically. So therefore, staying local is an easier approach. So after that, I plan on transferring to uh, Montana State University to pursue an electrical engineering degree. And so my question is, as the president of the University of Montana, what are your plans to expand on STEM development? And as the president, what do you value most at the University of Montana? Thank you. Thanks for standing that up and, and asking the question. I think it's a very uh, thoughtful question, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad to hear you're going to start at the University of Montana, yep. and I think it's the job of the people in this room to make sure you finish at the University of Montana. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, I mean, let's be clear. This university, this is a great research university. It's not that Montana State has all the engineering and University of Montana doesn't. I, there's tremendous science and natural sciences and biomedical sciences and, and just tremendous uh, programs here and environmental engineering and, and others. This is, this, this is a STEM university. I would tell you, as I, what excites me about this university is this is, I think, a false dichotomy between humanities and sciences. I mean, the best education models bring those together. And that's what we can do here. Understanding how human mind, how the, how the human mind works. I mean, Justin Angle went on a, and I went on a run. Those of you know Justin, he's like 6'6", six, six, and he runs like a gazelle. So he and I went on a run this morning. And Justin's in the business school. And Justin was telling me about the work that, that he's doing with the neuroscientists here in the, in the brain lab and looking at how, the, how decisions are made and the combination the multidisciplinary interaction that can happen, that does happen here at the doctoral level and, and does happen here at the undergraduate level is special, unique, and it's a differentiator for this place. And I'd want to amplify that. And I would advocate tirelessly that that is what you ought to do for your undergraduate education. <laughs> uh, go Grizz. All right, so that was uh, Steve Bodner, who will be uh, basically uh, taking up the mantle of University of Montana. But of course, it has to go through the Board of Regents to get approval. Um, Seth and his family are due to visit during homecoming week on October 12th through th throughout the weekend. Also, Mr. Bodner will be training under Sheila Stearns until his term begins in January. But then again, the Board of Regents still has to approve his... Um, his contract as president of the University of Montana. Uh, many of the things that, uh, during the public forum, many things that I noticed, because I was there during a lo the live stream of uh, Seth Bod Bodner, is that he had a tendency to uh, talk a lot about teamwork and about working together and um, basically finding the best people to fit the best roles. So in a lot of ways, it's more of him trying to find uh, the best solution through the best people rather than uh, solve the problems himself. So that's uh, kind of that's happening here in the University of Montana and here in the Missoula area. But in national news, um, I just want to make a, 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 a note of saying that the Las Vegas shooting has many people in America uh, reel at the tragedy. And we hope that the investigators will have all the answers to help with any prevention measures in the future. Uh, Steve Paddock set up a system of cameras that would film himself and the hallway um, uh, to his ho hotel room when he uh, basically unleashed uh, hell amongst uh, people at a concert and which had um, basically police said that uh, St Stephen uh, Paddock, a 64-year-old resident of Mesquite, Nevada, um, opened fire on a music festival crowd on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, killing 59 people and injuring 530 others, which is, th it is considered the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. And our hearts and prayers go out to the families and the victims and the people who are affected by this as well. Let's move on. Uh, I got some new programming that's going to be airing on MCAT. Um, we got a little uh, reflection of, of uh, Look Before You Speak um, being featured at uh, Black Owl Tattoo. We also got uh, New Way to Library, which is also uh, was hosted by some of the partner groups such as um, 
Families First Children's Museum, MCAT, and other and other places under the library, uh, talking about how they want to uh, bring people into the library and keep people into the library to have the idea. So, and also uh, um, another thing from. Rethinking Property, which is a program that talks about affordable housing, agriculture, and the community good. So without further ado, here are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And when I come back, I'm going to talk all about um, City Council. The machines I make are uh, coil driven. So they're, uh, you know how like an electric bell works? Uh, yeah. So electromagnetic? Yeah. Same thing. So it, j it runs just like that, kind of like a sewing machine up and down. And uh, I make various versions of that for people you know they'll let me know on what what they want to use it for like because all these images have certain needle groupings to put the ink into the skin and mm -hmm. i will build the machine off of that so this is our lady of guadalupe yep wow have you done many of those oh, i've done quite a few over the years of those yeah different versions yep. and uh so Sometimes the imagery is religious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done quite a few religious tattoos. Yeah. That is kind of brilliant. You know, and sometimes when I think, where are the places that people gather? And you traditionally have thought of the, the church. Hmm. And then you had to add the mall. And then good luck to you. You know, but you, somebody went mall walking this morning. So I'm not going to poo-poo the mall and say <laughs> it's like the most indifferent place in the planet. Because I'm sure it is not. But if you're at the mall... Let's say you're like an elderly person at the mall and you're like really worried about your heat bill and you've been living self-sufficiently, you know, for a number of years. And then you're thinking, well, should I go into some sort of senior deal? What would that possibly be like? And what does that mean for my taxes and all this other stuff? And how sometimes people have all these questions and you can't go to the mall in front of the Orange Julius store and start asking people, you know, like, ah, oh, this is my situation. Even though it's social, right, even though it seems uh -huh. really nice, there's just not the precedent or platform for people to solve problems in commercial settings, which almost seems the only place where we gather anymore, uh -huh. or loud concerts. And so it's this 31 acre uh, development. It was land that was part of the state surplus land uh, and that they eventually got the state to release and sell to these organizations. The CLT developed affordable housing, 30 homes on one, one section, and mixed income, so they have some affordable units. It's not all affordable. Um, elsewhere, there's in another section of it, they've got, got community gardens that a different organization manages. And then, and then there's this... Um, restored prairie and, and, and so on. Uh, so that was a CLT project. The next one down isn't even a, a community land trust, but it's worth mentioning just because, again, it, they, people, it's a housing development where they managed to fit, uh, preserve 100 acres for organic farming in, in suburban Illinois. Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some city council. Um, if, of course, if you want more information about uh, everything on that you just saw, you can log on to uh, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash um, uh, actually, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also go to MCAT.org. We have everything um, that you need to know about MCAT on our website, MCAT.org, and you can access any of those programs at any time via our video on demand um, links right here. So let's talk about some city council. I got all this information by ci.missoula.mt.us. MCAT uh, works with the city of Missoula, and we film all, all the uh, city council meetings. And I'm going to talk about some city council. And uh, the, biggest, uh, big, the biggest thing that happened at the city council meeting is the public comment section. Usually um, it's uh, reserved for a lot of public hearings and this and that from what I've done in the past. But a lot of times when a public, hearing, when a public comment, um, there's enough people that come there for a certain topic, a lot of people will gather and start um, talking about some things that uh, people don't really think about. And one of the things that they talk about was the uh, was the uh, Day of the Dead festival here in Missoula about how uh, it misappropriates the celebration with something that is a cultural thing that kind of uh, Missoulians have adopted into their own thing but as a way of um, most people don't think about so I will talk about a little bit about that um, so uh, w uh, let me just get that quote just ready to go oh that wasn't right 
All right, so I'm going to have to find it for you guys. So um, here is, this is David Beck, and he is a citizen of the city of, of Missoula, and he's talked about how he, um, he requested that the city of Missoula renounce the Festival of the Dead. Um, let me just find that quote real quick. <laughs> okay, here it is. ...which culminates in a parade is a direct ripoff of Day of the Dead, an event grounded in indigenous religious practices in southern and central Mexico. Yesterday, I attended one of their events for the first time to stand in support of indigenous people who were there to protest it. Their motto was, the protesters' motto was, this is not okay. We had been told by some of the organizers that the month-long activities in the parade were not modeled on the Day of the Dead, but nearly every person who spoke at their event referred to it as a Day of the Dead celebration. The attendees were very hostile to the indigenous protesters, mocking indigenous rit uh, rituals, and getting right in the protesters' faces to yell at them. They did not yell at us white folks who were there with them. I was shocked at the vitriol, the blatant racist actions, and the disregard for indigenous belief systems from members of the group. I also believe that it is inappropriate for them to co-opt native religious ceremonial activities and remake them into something of their own. I know they have the right to do it, but it is not the right thing to do. I do not believe that members of the organization act in ways that reflect the values of inclusivity that is the Missoula that I want to live in. So again, I urge the city council not to support this and in fact to renounce it. All right, so um, that was uh, David Beck uh, saying that that the city of Missoula should renounce it. Um, here's another comment by uh, Iku Beck, um, who uh, continues how this event is racist. parade and festival itself that's a problem, but then there's also the reaction to people who are just standing behind a sign. And that was like people coming up in, you know, the indigenous people's faces and yelling at them. And I think that that is uh, a <laughs> bad thing, you know, that's racism. And so is, so is the festival. And I think that the fact that once um, indigenous people step into the room, it becomes a racist situation, that that is not a festival for the entire community. Um, because, yeah, it's not welcoming to indigenous people, clearly. Um, so I would like, if I don't know if the city council is in charge of this, but if you guys could not have the parade happen or like not let the permit happen, um, I would really appreciate that. I think that a lot of people in my generation, we grew up thinking that this was just a, a, a regular thing. Like this is part of the community. This is one of the community's activities. So I didn't, I was socialized, you know, I'm 22 years old. I was socialized with this 25 year long festival to think that this appropriation was okay. And then I realized how wrong it was. And if we don't stop this, then there are going to be generations just like me who are going to grow up thinking that this appropriation is okay and that the behavior that those people um, like exhibited towards indigenous people is okay. And that really worries me because I think that our next generation should be better than this generation and, and hopefully less racist because I think that Missoula has a, a really unique community that could um, have a really cool festival that honors the dead that is not one that is from indigenous roots and doesn't like colonize other people's religions. All right, so that was Iku Beck, um, and here is uh, basically the city council members uh, basically can't directly uh, reply to c public comments, but uh, at the very end of the meeting, um, a couple of the um, city council members reacted to it and gave their thoughts to the uh, um, to reactions to these uh, particular comments that uh, a couple other people actually voiced their concerns about it as well. Here's My Zones. exposure and understanding of the Day of the Dead um, holiday has always been, for, for 12 years, my husband and I lived in Southern California, where there's a large Hispanic community, of course. And my exposure to this holiday or tradition was that it was 
extremely family oriented and families would basically get together be it at the cemetery or at a park to remember those who had passed before them if they went to the cemetery they would clean the tombstone they would always bring a picnic there would be food which is a very um, traditional they would they would leave food out for the person who had passed before it, it was really a way of honoring the dead and so when we moved back to Missoula and the first time I saw the Day of the Dead festival I was a little bit um, well, it was just a, a new take on the whole thing, and it has more of a, although I think there are themes of remembering the dead, it also has kind of a Mardi Gras feel to the whole thing. So I can understand why there is a rub here and some tension, and certainly I'm not an expert on any of these cultural traditions, but our, we just kind of went on with other things the day after the Halloween. Uh, th this wasn't any part that our family really took part in. So... I hope that there is a, a continuing awareness and education and dialogue in this community regarding the Day of the Dead celebration because I, I can understand why there's some, some tension regarding it. And um, I know that the School of Fine Arts at the university has done the steamroller art and the students have studied a lot of the art forms, um, the, the native art and this kind of thing in, in Mexico, and then they create these amazing murals. I mean, I think there's, there's some value in some ways that it's being approached, but I hope the dialogue continues in a far more civil fashion than what I've heard, and there's some more awareness, and hopefully this gets to a better place in our community that is celebrating the cultures and respecting the cultures. All right, so um, that was Gwen Jones. Um, I had a little, uh, I, I, uh, my little, uh, um, my pl the play button I hit a little too fast, um, but that was Gwen Jones who reflects on this as well. Uh, Marilyn Mahler talks about how these comments have impacted her because she herself admit that she was um, an active uh, parade goer and also participated in the parade. I haven't done that in a while, and maybe when I did paint my face like that, I didn't know that it was a religious ceremony or have religious significance. Maybe I didn't know that it was hurtful to people, but the fact is it doesn't matter whether I knew it was hurtful or not. Um, racism and hurtful behavior does not depend on having malice or malicious intent. Uh, it's just important that we continue to learn and we can do better. Um, I feel now that I was wrong to participate in that and I will encourage other people not to participate in that. Um, I think we can be better, and I think that the dialogue is really helpful. Um, I would also like to comment that in the 25 years since the festival started, it has changed. Um, I think it used to mainly be the procession and the dressing up, and now there's a lot of workshops like write your own obituary and um, imagine your own death and different things. Um, but I don't think it's changed enough yet, and I think it takes all of us to um, consciously think about what we're, what we're doing and how we want to participate. And to do that, we have to listen to everyone and not be defensive. Uh, it's pretty painful when um, you're a white liberal and someone tells you that you did something racist <laughs> and hurtful. That's uh, not something that I really like to hear about myself. But I try to listen to people and I try to believe them, um, even though it might be easier not to believe them. So, friends, please don't participate in dress up and cultural appropriation this year, and please help spread awareness. Thanks. All right, so that was Marilyn Marler talking about that. Um, um, the, okay, so a public comment continue with uh, the theme of uh, folks concerned that the Festival of the Dead being used as a way to celebrate in ways that reflect negatively to indigenous groups, something that you, they never really think about. I know I never have. A parade I've never been a part of, um, not because of the issues, it's basically because I just don't feel like doing the parade. Um, so uh, the city also talked about an update to an ordinance to publicly place signs. Um, I, I want to I switch gears almost right away. I don't want to talk about it too much. Um, so Gilbert, uh, El Arizona, cited Good News uh, Community Church with exceeding the uh, time limit for displaying its temporary directional signs as well as a failure to include the date of an event on the signs. The church eventually filed suit with the district court claiming that the sign code violated their freedom of speech. The district and nine, Ninth Circuit Court uh, decided with the town of Gilbert and the case eventually ended up in the Supreme Court which overturned the lower court's decision finding Gilbert's sign code was not content 
um, based on the and violated the First and Fourteenth Amendment. The court's decision required all sign codes to be considered content neutral. Uh, sign codes must be based on the site activity zoning distinctions and uh, regulated on size, location, number, lighting, materials, and the like. They cannot take into account the content I of the sign itself, i.e. political garage sales, special events, or other similar contents. Now, the City of Missoula updated their ordinance to reflect this case and their amendments. This is to help reduce distractions and, uh, um, and too many signs, uh, but, not to, but not the content which the signs will be uh, cited in any case. The City voted in favor for this update since it is a federal mandate and that just passed recently. Um, any other rulings and permissions, you'll have to look up by yourself by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. There is a link to uh, the this ordinance on the sire page that is provided when you click on the agenda um, if you guys take a look real quick you can kind of see um, the list of uh, different things orders if you click on any of these links the video goes to that uh, point in um, when in that point in the agenda when they're talking about this particular agenda point uh, but if you want to find out more information you can also click on this ordinance right here once you click on it, it brings you up a whole list of ordinance draft, summary of sign up uh, um, amendments and all that stuff. Just to kind of give you a clear of um, representation of what um, what kind of updates doing, what things are changing. A lot of ways, this is just basically going to make it a little easier for people to be able to put up signs. And whether or not they have religious um, um, things or political things displayed on them means uh, no difference. But of course, um, th it's just usually appropriated with like um, time frames and stuff like that, just to try to figure out how to make it a little bit easier on everybody. So that's basically what's happening in the city of Missoula. Um, Next Monday, they won't have a city council meeting, so uh, there's that um, because of uh, Indigenous uh, People's Day or Columbus Day or the holiday form known as Columbus Day. I don't know. There's no right way of saying it. There's no wrong way. There's but there's always a wrong way of saying it. So that's my, <laughs> my thing. Um, but I do have a new dumb stuff, so I'm going to switch gears and get a little funnier uh, with uh, my uh, weekly uh, series called Dub and Stuff, where I am going, where I basically take old public domain movies and redub their voices and add some music in there as well. So without further ado, here is The Fast and the Furious from 1955. All right, let me see here. Uh, how fast are we going? It seems like you're going a little fast. Yes! Yes! The date's all right, finally All right, all right, calm down. I can't believe it! The <laughs> there speeds out the spectrum! Um... Uh, hi. Ooh, that's not a good idea. Ooh, so, um, um... Are we gonna stop anytime soon? Oh, we still have a ways to go. Well, I just feel like I need to stop, okay? Uh, well, I was just getting furious. I'm now just getting fast. Well, we've kind of overlapped everyone else here. I don't want it to be like the tortoise and the hare. And I'm the hare. I don't want to just relax and let people pass me by. Hey, um, I was wondering, uh, what are you doing after the race? Uh, this isn't really a good time. Um, I gotta go. Oh, oh, whatever. It's just like, br just breakfast. Ah, crap. I knew we shouldn't have went to Chick-fil-A. Oh, behave. Uh, it's the tortoise and the hare all over again. You know, you can be fast without being furious. Being fast makes you go fast. Being furious helps you turn. Huh, if you say so. Uh, I do say so. I, s I do say so. Hey. How long have the racers been there? Well, I'd say they've been there for about an hour or so. Well, that can't be possible. I've been driving really fast and furious. <laughs> well, that's not quite enough anymore. It's not? Man. It's uh, it's a mixture of, you know, racing stripes and, you know, powerful subwoofers. Well, I don't buy into that gimmicky stuff. Oh, you may have to, young man. Well, there might be a way of doing it without selling out. <laughs> well, if there is, you can maybe help take get rid of this accident for me. Oh, <laughs> I'll see you later. All right.
All right, welcome back. Let's talk about events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, starting with kids' bounce and playtime. So in the I in Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, um, they provide um, Missoula County and the surrounding areas with its first state-of-the-art indoor sports field. Uh, they also have an inflated park consisting of a large inflatable, such as playgrounds, obstacle courses, slides, and a bounce house. They provide fun, and this happens from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., but they also have an after-school thing that happens on days as well so you can check that out there's random acts of kindness at family's first children's museum happening from 11 a.m. to noon usually they most of the events happen from 11 a.m. to 11 30 but this time they're doing a full hour what can you do to be kind to each other they're asking kids that question and putting together a special um, art project based on their responses they'll be offering uh, parent tips on kids and social media a place where cyberbullying uh, often takes place and kids can be notoriously unkind to one another it will offer a taste of uh, free social media challenges parenting classes um, families first will be uh, presenting on Thursday October 12th um, give back to Glacier Week um, REI is um, doing a, a Missoula and on Facebook Live to hear executive park updates and Glacier National Park Superintendent Jeff Moe, National Park uh, Nef National Resource Manager P Mark Beal and Bark Ranger Gracie um, Bring your lunch and hear how you your donations to Glacier National Park uh, Conservation. Oh, sorry, oh, conservatory um, impact critical projects and um, programs throughout the park. Check out the entire lineup of speakers and at Glacier.org so you can tune in live all week. And then you can join the first special presenta presentation with um, Superintendent Jeff Moe, a park perspectives. The last 12 months in Glacier National Park has seen record snowfall followed by extreme heat and fires, along with un. Um, precedented um, visitation numbers. So a lot of times uh, you never know with uh, tourist seasons how many people want to go there depending upon based on snows and overheat. Uh, but this year the Sun Road was open a lot earlier because of some of the extreme heats that happened as well but they also had a, some record snowfall during that time. And also many of their, uh, during the fire, they had a fire up in Glacier, which uh, burned down one of their old historic buildings that were built long ago as well. So um, that's what's happening with Glacier. They're doing uh, also Facebook Live, so if you can't make it, then you can watch it, uh, uh, basically, REI Missoula, their Facebook page, and they can show you links and all that stuff. So it would be really interesting to learn about that. Uh, my iPad and my iPhone at the Missoula Public Library, an introductory class for iPad and iPhone for phone users who would like to become more comfortable with their devices. And you have to sign up for classes. You call them at 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721-2665, and it starts at 1230 in the um, computer classroom. Um, getting started with gene genealogy. Genealogy seems to be a very popular thing, but a lot of times it's um, as easy as spitting into a vial and just sending it out in the mail. But um, Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is gathering up around 2 p.m. this afternoon and is uh, basically is studying. Uh, this course is uh, will introduce both as just curious and the enthusiastic beginners of various methods for conducting a search and give them the tools to get started and unveiling their own personal history, learn organization tools, and collecting data for such as forms, family trees, ancestor, ancestor charts, family group sheets, relationship charts. There are many uh, programs online to basically connect you with your ancestors and also many people who have already done it uh, also have a program along there as place it's a lot basically has a lot to do with pinging so the whole idea is like as soon as you uh, are connected to one person that another person connected to then you basically kind of start a whole uh, web of connection in your family history so that's a very interesting thing to do and uh, you can get started with genealogy 2 p.m. this afternoon at Dixon Lifelong Learning Center and I know that genealogy for a lot of people is a very popular thing nowadays even though it's family trees is something that a lot of kids do when they're kids. Um, Missoula Middle School Writers, the Pub Missoula Public Library also hosts a middle school writers group at the Missoula Public Library from 3.30 to 5 p.m. and this is for kids grades uh, 6 through 9 and that's a usually crucial time for kids uh, to really get into creative writing, improve their writing skills. Um, you, you learn to read in the first, second grade area, maybe kindergarten, if not earlier, depending upon um, your at-home thing. Um, and uh, writing is another thing that uh, you never really uh, think about utilizing until later in the, uh, the pre-adolescent stage in your life. So that's just a way to improve your writing skills and come up with uh, good feedback and play with words and have some chocolate. So um, I'm, I know I'm lingering on a bunch of these um, events as well. Uh, there's Rent Wise Workshop. Um, 
happening tonight at 6 p.m. If you're a renter here in Missoula, Homeward is providing uh, is providing a free rent wise workshop, and this is tonight from 6 to 9 p.m. You want to be a successful renter? Our uh, free rent wise workshop will teach you the keys to renting, including household budgeting, impacts of credit and rental history, fair housing practices, the landlord's perspective, your rights and responsibilities, step to finding and getting to, um, rental housing. So one of the things that you can learn from Homeward um, is also like um, just because you're not paying property taxes doesn't mean that your landlords not paying property taxes which can incentivize them to raise your rent as well in the future um, another big thing that's happening um, if you've missed a couple of the candidates form for awards uh, one and two tonight candidates form for awards three and four it's going to be at the Lewis and Clark Village community room um, they're going to be uh, interviewing candidates for wards three and wards four. Um, you got Riverfront, Rose Park, and University districts. Um, candidates are uh, for ward three are Heather Harp, Thomas Winter, and John Van Dyke. Um, so basically, the, the ward three consists of Riverfront, Rose Park, and University district. So these are the people who represent your district. And if you want to ask some questions, you go to Lewis and Clark Village Community Room, 3000 South Higgins Avenue. Um, and also Ward 4, if you're in the Fairviews, Patty Canyon, Lewis and Clark, Moose Can Gully, uh, basically part of Rose Park, um, South Cape Triangle, and University District, um, candidates John Wilkins, um, Greg San Stanberg, Chris Badsley, and uh, Jesse Ramos will be Vi uh, will be fighting for Ward 4. And it seems like it's pretty big since there's four candidates. Um, and of course, uh, Ward 2, they had no... Um, people, nobody in War 2 is going to be rerunning, so there's uh, two spots in War 2 that are up for election as well, so it's going to be a huge change for War 2, um, so uh, unfortunately you guys missed it. So that's kind of what's happening uh, in and around Missoula for, uh, in terms of events and uh, happening on Wednesday night. Here are some of the uh, musical events that are happening. Um, you got... Uh, Black Tiger Sex Machine at Top Hat Lounge. It's electronic music. And you got karaoke at Eagles Lodge, um, Badlander, and Sunrise Saloon. And that kind of consists everything that you guys need to know what's happening um, on Wednesday night. So here is a um, art clip. And this is f um, ends on October 7th. So you have until this weekend to check this out. And this is uh, an art installation at the Zootown Arts Community Center. And this is basically inspired by kids monster art, which is also uh, made uh, available to professional artists or more grown-up artists. I don't want to say one thing over another because, you know, professional is... Um, I, get, I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, art is subjective as well. So they get uh, kid artists and they link them up with adult artists and the adult artists make a reflection of the kids' art for their monsters. So without further ado, um, less talking, here is an art clip from the Zootown Arts Community Center provided by our, own ver uh, our very own Rick Phillips. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for Thursday events. Um, kicking off for your Thursday morning is Understanding Chief... Geez, Chief... Oh, jeez, I'm already ruining it already. Um, understanding Chief... Jo 
understanding Chief Joseph and the Nez Pierce. Um, University of Montana, starting tomorrow at 7 a.m., bright and early, the UM History Department welcomes distinguished historian Daniel uh, Scharfstein to Missoula to deliver the ninth annual Hampton Lecture. In his talk, um, Scharfstein will discuss the Nez Pierce War, Chief Joseph's relationship with the United States, and the legendary Chief Joseph's criticism of American powder. power. Oh, almost got through it. Almost. Um, NAMI uh, Missoula Weekly Meeting, Providence Center, a free weekly meeting for anyone affected by mental illness, including relatives, friends, and caregiver caregivers, or interested in learning about NAMI. No registra registration is required. It starts at 10 a.m. at the Providence Center. Story Garden at Family's First Children's Museum. Join for uh, join our guest storyteller as we grow with books, reading Brown um, Brown Bear, Brown Bear. This delightful children's book is uh, designed to help toddlers associate with colors and meaning with objects. An engaging art project that inspires imagination will flow. And that happens from 11 to 12.30 p.m. at the Children's First, at Family's First Children's Museum. Wild Webs um, at Missoula Insectarium. Join them to learn about the wild world of spider webs. Did you know how, many, how spiders manage to avoid sticking to their own webs? What about how many different types of silk a spider can make. Uh, they'll learn to answer those trivia questions and a whole lot more. And you can join them at webs under the microscope before doing a watercolor web in inspired art project. Uh, Climate Smart Missoula monthly meetup. It's Transpo and Smart Growth from 5 to 7 p.m. at Imagination Brewing Company. Um, they focus on one of the, our buckets to uh, focal areas of the Community um, Climate Action Plan, and you can bring and share your ideas connected with partners and others and learn about the current climate of efforts in Missoula. Store presentations at 515, and they have a light snack. Smurfit's known um, mill site uh, community advisory group, Frenchtown, Frenchtown Fire Hall. Community members meet for the first Thursday of every month to discuss the cleanup of former Smurfit Stone um, mill site. The, pr the public is invited to participate in this process by attending Frenchtown Smurfit Stone Community Advisory Group, CAG, meeting and ac ac accessing online information by www.epa.gov slash superfund slash smurfit dash stone um, and form the KEGS Facebook page. And you can go to Facebook page. It's, it's the, uh, the page is called Frenchtown CAG. So if you want to learn more information about the Smurfit Stone Mill site and their cleanup group and community advisory group, you can go to their Facebook page, Frenchtown CAG. Um, candidates form for mayor and wards 5 and 6, so this is a big thing happening, 6 p.m. at C.S. Porter in the Cougar Gym. Candidates form for mayor and wards 5 and 6, October 5th, um, 2017. This goes from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. C.S. Porter, Cougar Gym, uh, 2510 Central Avenue. Um, mayor candidates John Engen and Lisa, Lisa Chipke will be... Um, to, uh, answering questions from the community as well as people in Ward 5, which neighborhoods consist of Miller Creek, Moose Can Gully, Franklin to the Fort, South 39th. Um, and so if you live in those areas, your your ward is going to be uh, having candidates Stacy Anderson and Kathy Deschamps. And you get to ask them questions and all that stuff. And in Ward 6, um, the neighborhoods are Flanken to the Fort, River Road, and Two Rivers. And the, um, the candidate is Julie uh, Merritt. That's it. Just one person that's going to be there um, for the uh, the awards. Um, I believe that th I think this person is running unopposed. But then again, you never know until you get the ballot. Um, Travelers Rest Chapter Lewis and Clark Trail Heritage um, at uh, Lolo Community Center. Um, Silly Man's presentation will include um, both historic photos and um, vintage engravings. His collection of photographs and vintage engravings of the American West has been displayed at more than 90 venues throughout Montana and 10 other states since 1988. So that's 29 years because I know that because I was born in 1988 and I did the math. Um, he will cover topics including bison origins, um, natural enemies, bison art, and the uh, importance of bison in Plains Indian culture including pre-horse and horse hunting methods. He will also document the decline in the bison during the period of white settlement and the, of the West and uh, and discuss the current status of the bison uh, but also um, there is a difference between bison and buffalo there are two different species um, just so you guys know that's that's what well people most people don't know that but they're two sub different species but I know they look alike but they're two different species of the same um, family G genia whatever anyways Let's not get on that. Uh, I <laughs> Blaze Dodgeball. 
let's talk about some dodgeball. Um, tomorrow night at 8 p.m., the in- Missoula Indoor Sports Arena um, is doing a w- with the Blaze 96.3. It's uh, intense rock music. Um, the Bay and Brewery, uh, Brewery are excited to announce that the Blaze Dodgeball is back for the fall season. The uh, fun g- games begin on Thursday, September 14th, and it, it goes every Thursday from 8 to 10 p.m. And this is they have three more left. This is the midpoint. Um, and this is a six-week thing. Teams can sign up for the se- for the season or for a single night. And individuals can sign up for a single night play. Teams are co co-ed and consist of four to a six adult players. The spring se- season will was a blast, and you don't want to miss out on all the fun. So that's kind of what's happening there. Um, and I also wanted to mention that Chris Catan will be in town tomorrow night as well, if he's not already in town right now, just hanging out in Missoula. Chris Catan, if you know him from 90s, uh, 90s and early 2000s. Um, Saturday Night Live, a couple movie fame. Um, he's going to be basically there doing a comedy. Montana Comedy presents Chris Kattan. He's hosted by Locus Seeley. $25 general admissions, and it's going to be at Monk's. Other than that, here are some of your other events that are happening. Um, Talk, which is T-A-U-K, is going to be at the Top at Lounge. It's going to be rock music, Lolo Creek Band at the Sunrise Saloon, rock and karaoke at Dark Horse, and you got karaoke at the VFW. So those are the kind of things that are happening um, tonight and tomorrow night. Mostly karaoke stuff. But there are a lot of candidates for them. So if you guys want to check that out, you can go to uh, the City of Missoula's website. It's as easy as going to ci.missoula.mt.us. And you can find out all the uh, events and all the locations and how to get engaged with city government by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, you can also go to mcat.org to find out more information about MCAT. Tonight is orientation. Every Wednesday night, MCAT host orientation at 5 30 p.m so if you're interested in learning about mcat and being involved with mcat we'll uh, sub- subject you to a short eight minute um orientation video uh followed by a, a, a discussion about what you want to do with mcat and how mcat can help you in terms of uh, video projects and get involved with video projects in the future as well but that does it for me and i want to thank you all for joining me this morning i'll see you guys friday with a new flagship friday video of the week and more from your city of Missoula. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.